We'll be starting services shortly, but uh, as we sometimes say, we're going with Hawaiian time. <laughs> or or uh, maybe today we say we're going by baby time. Yes. So we're waiting, uh, we will wait for the great-grandson to appear, as well as his escort. <laughs> and uh, we'll, we'll begin the service shortly. I guess this would be a, a, an okay time for me to mention that uh, we have already begun the live stream, so right now, if people are tuning in, they're seeing this beautiful picture of uh, Bill. And uh, if you would like to view the live stream of this service at a later time, you can also do that as well by going onto YouTube and looking for our, the name of our church, Montebello Plymouth Congregational Church. It's in your program uh, and uh, on our channel this service should be available. So uh, I guess it's especially valuable for, for Paxton, who may not be quite aware of what's going on in the service today, but years from now, he'll be able to have a chance to uh, to join us via YouTube. So we'll be starting shortly. Thank you.
about your mom. I'll give a little update. So it's not quite about Hawaiian time or baby time. Apparently, it's about uh, LA traffic time. <laughs> so for what I'm understanding. So uh, we will be getting today. We'll be, we'll be having a work service, uh, but uh, I guess it is dependent right now on, on Los Angeles traffic. So uh, I think for the time being, it's okay to visit with one another. And, uh, uh, when, when we hear that they're closer, then we'll, we'll start putting the service together. So please, uh, make yourself at home. Uh, we do have restrooms. We have restrooms through this exit, the hallway. There are also some restrooms in the social hall. So, uh, make yourself at home. Keep texting him.
Greetings. <coughs> Excuse me. Greetings, friends. Uh, we gather here in the protective shelter of God's healing love. We gather here to pour out our grief, release our anger, to face our emptiness and know that God still cares. We gather to hear a word of hope that can move us to offer God our praise. We gather to commend to God with thanksgiving the life of Wilbur Nobuo Sato, known to most of you as Bill, as we celebrate the good news of Christ's resurrection. For whether we live or whether we die, we belong to Christ, who is Lord of the dead and the living. Aloha. My name is Mitchell Young. I serve as the pastor here at Montebello Plymouth Congregational Church, United Church of Christ. And on behalf of the church, I wish to express heartfelt sympathy with the family, with the daughter Wendy, son-in-law Russell, uh, granddaughter Courtney, and husband Galen. Uh, we're glad you made it here. Uh, and, and though he may not know it, what I'm saying right now, uh, also uh, you can watch on YouTube video of this, this service when you're older, uh, grand, great-grandson Paxton, indeed the whole Sato family. Uh, although we cannot lessen your pain, please know that we do share in it. So let us join our hearts together in prayer. Let us pray. Holy God, whose ways are not our ways, whose thoughts are not our thoughts, grant that your Holy Spirit may step in for us with sighs too deep for human words. And loving God, surround, support, and comfort us as we continue our earthly journeys without Bill. And through it all, may we find strength, courage, and hope through the peace of Christ, which passes all understanding. We pray in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. At this time, the U.S. Army Guard will be presenting military honors. My fellow soldier and I are here today to render final military honors for a fallen comrade. Today's ceremony will include the playing attacks, followed by the unfolding, folding, presentation of the flag. During playing of the taps, I ask all who are able to please stand and place your right hand over your heart as such. For those who are currently in the service, prior service, or first responders, you may render the final hand salute. At the conclusion of taps, please be seated. Now at this time, direct your attention toward our fallen comrade for military honors and for the playing of taps.
You may be seated. On behalf of the President of the United States, the United States Army, and a grateful nation, please accept our flag as a symbol of appreciation for your loved one's honorable and faithful service. granddaughter Courtney to share Bill's personal history.
Hi everyone. Papa Bill was born August 29, 1931 in Paia, Maui to Agnes and Makoto Sato. He was the oldest of four children. Sadly, we've already said goodbye to Uncle Sachi and Uncle Norman, but Auntie Jane is alive and well and residing in Kauai and hopefully watching this live on YouTube. Papa went to Maui High School and graduated in 1951. My Papa kept in contact with many of his classmates and attended reunions often. He enjoyed his childhood in Maui and would often reflect on his love of the land. He served in the U.S. National Guard from 1951 to 52, then served in the U.S. Army from 1952 to 1960. His military service took him to Korea, Austria, and Germany, which he enjoyed. He was not in active combat, and he was honorably discharged as a corporal in 1960. Galen, Galen, there's snacks underneath. <laughs> He moved to Los Angeles while still in the Army and met his wife, Doris, through mutual friends. They hit it off well and married on July 2nd, 1955, and were married for 59 years before Nana's passing in 2015. They enjoyed a life of travel within the U.S., going clubbing and dancing with friends. They had two children, a son, Lance, who was born in 1956 and passed away in 1996 from heart disease and a daughter, Wendy, my mom, who was born in 1960. So now we can all do the math. He worked, uh, you wrote this by the way. <laughs> he worked for 57 years in the gardening and landscaping business. He enjoyed working outdoors where he could artistically work on his gardens. During early COVID, my parents moved Papa from his home to theirs. In 2021, his mental health and independence started to decline, and we moved him to Nike Senior Gardens, where he could get the attention and socialization he needed. He enjoyed his new home, participating in many classes, along with going on weekly field trips and eating both Japanese and American foods. In 2023, Papa's health declined further, and he suffered two strokes. He became aphasic and had a difficult time communicating. He was then moved from his own apartment to the memory care unit at Nikkei Senior Gardens. The loving and caring staff at Nikkei made each day for him so happy and fulfilled. Papa Bill was known at Nikkei as the Hawaiian shirt guy because he wore one nearly every day all year round. On Papa's 92nd birthday in August 2023, the memory care unit surprised him with a Hawaii-themed party that included residents wearing their own decorated straw hats and employees wearing Aloha shirts. It surely made his last birthday mem memorable. Papa's health quickly declined in 2024 with frequent falls and visits to the ER. In March, he broke his back and was in excruciating pain. It devastated our family. On March 25th, Palm Sunday, my family and I spent the day with Papa. He received his last sacrament from my parents' priest. Papa Bill passed away the next day, Monday, at 10 a.m. with my mom, dad, and a few loving Nike staff by his bedside. He peacefully passed with soft Hawaiian music playing as he journeyed to God and joined his wife, son, and many other family members. Um, I, I wrote something else in the chance that I needed to give a, a speech. Um, so I thought I would also read a little bit from my heart. I've thought a lot about life and death in the past few years. For those of you who don't know, now you do, this is my son. I gave birth to him, Paxton, in July of last year. In fact, my husband and I found out we were pregnant after fertility struggles the day we flew out to Hawaii for my other grandfather's funeral. We didn't tell the family until months later, but we knew, and there's something psychologically and emotionally challenging about preparing for a new life as you say goodbye to another. But here we are at Paxton's first funeral, not the type of milestone we celebrate, but just a milestone of life, I suppose. I have to say that one of the highlights of becoming a mother has been watching my parents become grandparents. Most of you here know that, most of you here are friends of theirs and know that 
Wendy and Russell were born to be grandparents. They did a decent job raising me, I think, but I'm also pretty sure they enjoy raising my kid a hundred times more, and that's probably because they have the option to hand them back to us at the end of the day. But in all seriousness, seriousness, watching my parents enjoy grandparenting has made me reflect on my grandparents and the role they played in shaping me. So as a eulogy of sorts, I've written a letter to my son about my grandfather. Dear Paxton, they say you inherit more than genetics, half nature and half nurture, how you are raised and by whom set into motion the type of person you are and you will become in this world. Well, you won't remember your great Papa Bill, but I hope we can show you pictures and tell you stories and give you a better idea of where you come from and how loved you are. I want you to love beauty like Papa did, and I hope you get his artistic eye and attention to detail. I want, you, I want to raise you to have his work ethic, but maybe not for manual labor. Papa did have a temper, and I know there will be times when I lose my cool too, but I hope you know that maybe we're just passionate people, and maybe we're channeling Pele, the Hawaiian goddess of volcanoes. So the next time I get upset at you for flinging food on the ground or making noise when you're not supposed to, uh, we can just say we're a passionate family. Growing up, Nana Doris and Papa Bill showed up to every dance performance I ever had. It didn't matter if I was in the back row or didn't make the competition team. My parents sat through, my grandparents, and parents I guess, sat through every two hour recital with a big bouquet of flowers for me. When I had outdoor performances in 102 degree heat, Nana and Papa would arrive at seven in the morning to reserve a spot that would have shade. I know your grandparents will do the same for you and whatever you decide to pursue, but I sure hope you like some indoor activities because mom's not partial to sitting in the sun. We're already raising you to be nice to the kitties and Papa Bill loved animals, cats, dogs, horses. He was even raised with chickens. I hope you are kind and care for animals like him. Ultimately, Paxton, I hope you know that mom and grandma's side of the family may be small in number, but we make up for it in love and loyalty. I hope to raise you with the passion and dedication and love for home and animals and beauty that Papa Bill had. And with any luck, we'll all get to live to our 92nd birthday rocking Aloha shirts. And now we have my daughter Wendy to share some good words. Good morning. It's so nice to see everyone here to celebrate my father's life. He would be so happy to see all this just for him. He was a simple, humble man who loved growing up in Hawaii, loved animals and nature, and most of all, had a zest for life and lived it the way he wanted. He could talk for hours about his youth, living in Paia, Maui, with his parents, three siblings, and his love for his grandmother. He would spend his days in the ocean, skin diving and fishing. He loved everything and anything to do with the islands. He played the ukulele and could climb a coconut tree. His favorite thing to do was to go to California Hawaii festivals. He would drag my mother wee hours in the morning, scope out a place for shade, and sit there and listen to the music and watch all the island dances, often being the last person to leave. He would get caught telling strangers that he was Japanese Hawaiian, even though he didn't even have a drop of blood of Hawaiian. So my dad, he was so ecstatic when I married Russell, who had Hawaiian blood. <laughs> My dad was artistic and meticulous, which made him a great and rare gardener. He not only mastered the art of Hawaiian feather making, which there are samples that I put up here, it would take him months 
to complete one item, but he also mastered the art of bonsai. He saw beauty in nature with every bush, tree, and flower. He loved being outdoors and would often spend hours artistically shaping and cultivating his gardens. He would use his talent at my home and the home of his customers. It wasn't until years later that I found out um, how much my father's customers treasured my dad. I guess I would treasure my gardener too if he spent two to three hours at my home. Can you imagine? That's how my dad was. Everything had to be perfect, not just so-so. So he had to be forced to retire at 85 years old because of his love for his work. It was taking a toll on his aging body. My dad wanted to be eternally young, at least in his mind he wanted to be. The only problem was that his body was slowing down. He needed a hearing aid, but he refused to wear it. He needed a cane, but refused to use it. He would tell us, I don't want to look old. Well, Dad, um, I hate to tell you this, but you're old. <laughs> when he started living at Nikkei Senior Gardens, he would participate in all the various activities. He was often one of the only men who would join in and participate. He would call me up and say, Wendy, you got to talk to them. Tell them to have more activities for men. He didn't realize the men just weren't interested in participating. They would rather just go to their rooms. He enjoyed being social and being around others, which included being around animals. He was a lover of all creatures, big and small. I grew up in a household full of animals. We had a several cats, a couple of dogs, bunnies, and a tortoise. Animals brought him great joy and would often, he would often have bags of treats in his truck for his customers' pets who anxiously and happily awaited his arrival. My dad enjoyed traveling, and in his later years, he accompanied us on many trips. He liked going to USC away games, Hawaii, and Las Vegas, to name a few. He just enjoyed being around our friends. In 2019, we fulfilled one of my dad's lifelong dream of going to Japan. He was never happier. We would often pick him up at his assisted living and take him out to lunch, museum, take him for a stroll at the beach, sometimes perhaps to a mall. And he would always be so happy and thankful. And at the end of every drop off, my dad would always say, thank you so much for taking me out. I had so much fun, but dad, you were in the ER all day, I would say. That's how he was. He just loved getting out. My dad was thrilled when his only grandchild was born, Courtney. When I was born, he bought me my first doll and continued to buy me a doll subsequently every year after that. He and my mother would continue this doll tradition when Courtney was born. I have now acquired quite a substantial collection. I'm just not sure my grandson Paxton would appreciate it. <laughs> Nothing could compare to the excitement and joy that my dad had at having a great grandson. At a time when my dad had become aphasic and could barely form coherent words, he could manage to say, cute baby. Paxton would have him grinning from ear to ear. I put together some pictures of my dad's life in a slideshow, but realized that there were pictures of his married life and of my brother and I growing up. And I thought about it because my dad took pictures of everything. Well, I figured it out. He had everything on slides. 
There were thousands of slides. I had no energy to go through each of them. So I put together the best slides I could from what I had. At this time, I would like to call up my son-in-law, Galen, who will perform a song by K.L.A.E. Reichel. I dedicate this song to my father, who loved growing up in Paia, Maui. chosen a couple of scripture readings and I'd like to share them with you now. 
Uh, the first reading comes from the Gospel of Luke. This is chapter 13, verses 6 through 9. Then Jesus told this parable. A man had a fig tree planted in his vineyard, and he came looking for fruit on it and found none. So he went to the man working in the vineyard and said, See here, for three years I have come looking for fruit on this fig tree, and still I find none. Cut it down. Why should I be wasting the soil? He replied, Sir, let it alone for one more year until I dig around it and put some manure on it. If it bears fruit the next year, well and good. But if not, you can cut it down. The second reading comes from the Gospel of John, chapter 20. And these, these are verses 13 through 16. The angels said to Mary, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, They have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. When she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she didn't know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you looking for? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabuni, which means teacher. May God add blessing to the reading and to the hearing of God's holy word. Thanks be to God. Amen. When Wendy and Russell uh, described Dad to me, uh, they mentioned his gift for gardening and for landscaping, how Bill could nurse any otherwise dying plant back to health with his own special knowledge and skill. Uh, also, this was his profession for 57 years, working well beyond the years when most of us would have long retired. Uh, so for our meditation scriptures this morning, I immediately thought of the parable of the barren fig tree, uh, where we find Jesus teaching in, in the Gospel of Luke. And even though this parable is shared in the context of uh, people asking why disaster might befall even innocent people, we cannot help but be impressed by the gardener in this parable, in this, in, who, who pleads with the vineyard owner not to cut down the fig tree that hasn't given fruit for three years. The gardener asks the owner to give the tree one last chance to produce fruit, as the gardener then vows to do some additional cultivation and fertilizing to help that tree. What a loyal gardener. Sound familiar? Didn't Bill have that knack for seeing potential in a plant that otherwise had that others had already given up on. And now, here in this season of Easter, this season of resurrection, I also thought of the Gospel of John describing Jesus' resurrection. And Jesus' first recorded personal encounter after having been raised from death, he stands at the tomb behind a grief-stricken follower named Mary and starts conversing with her. But she doesn't know that it's Jesus. Instead, she thinks he's the gardener and asks if he has carried Jesus' body away so that she can take care of it. And it's only when Jesus calls her by name does she turn and call out back to him, teach her. Even though the text doesn't give details here about how Jesus may have been dressed uh, at, in this post-resurrection encounter, it's interesting, there developed an artistic tradition among painters throughout history to paint Jesus in this scene uh, wearing a big-brimmed hat, a uh, gardening hat, and, or, and holding in his hand either a shovel or a gardening hoe. I'm wondering if the tradition still continues. I wonder if there are any Hawaii artists who maybe 
uh, drew or have painted pictures of Jesus uh, wearing puka pants or something like that. So in both of our Bible readings, uh, they seem to have an affection for gardeners, even as Bill was a prolific and caring gardener as well. Uh, whether we're talking about caring for a fruitless fig tree or caring for a grieving friend, or might I add, God's care for creation in the Garden of Eden. There's something wonderful about gardeners, especially the loving, caring ones that extend just beyond the nurture of vegetation. Might we not also include our dear Bill as one of those loyal gardeners? I, I know that that sounds like a play of word. There was a, a, a very popular uh, Hawaiian performer uh, back in our day uh, named Loyal Garner. Uh, but I, I, I refer to Bill now as our loyal gardener. Yes, his love of uh, working outdoors among plants and flowers is, is the obvious connection. Yet in the broader sense, Bill's love of animals, whether riding horses, fishing, or, or enjoying the companionship of family pets, is also an extension of Bill's compassionate nature of living creatures and of loving God's creation. And you take that that nurture a step further, we remember how Bill loved being around people, traveling, singing, dancing, connecting with family and friends, uh, both here in California as well as in Hawaii. So I encourage you to let these be days of remembering, talk with each other, laugh together, and cry together. Uh, that's actually the best way to do your grieving and now for, uh, for those of you that went and grew up together with Bill, uh, you may remember the small kid time, how you would run around Maui together, maybe even Kauai or Oahu, the kind of adventures you would have together. And like Bill, you will remember those memories of the good old days, even the hard times and the dreams that you went dream together. Of course, there were disappointments and hurts in Bill's life and in the lives that were touched by Bill's life. Undoubtedly, there were dreams that never came to reality. But through difficulties, our loyal gardener, Bill, did not let negatives rule his life. And uh, during this time, you may very well remember pains and disappointments. You may Think of things that you uh, wish you had said or done, or maybe even things you wish you hadn't said or done. Bring all of that before God, because in God's great love and mercy, God receives all of that. So continue to remember the impact that Bill had in our lives as a father, as a grandfather, and as a great-grandfather as an uncle, as a co-worker, as a friend. And tell stories to each other about how you remember Bill, a happy, gregarious man who was always ready to lend a hand. So in the end, we can thank God that we had Bill in our lives for these past 92 years. And let us be comforted to know that God cared for Bill and that Bill is now in God's more immediate presence. And for this, we give thanks to God. Amen. Let us pray. Eternal and loving God, we remember the life of Bill, and we give you praise and thanks for all that he was. We thank you for the love of so many who have loved him through the years and have blessed his life. And now in thanksgiving and in praise, we commit him to your eternal care. And loving God, be near to those who sorrow. Help them to sense the, the reassurance of your never failing love in life and beyond the bounds of our vision. And in that faith to know a deep and abiding comfort and inner peace, 
We commit them each one to your care in the name of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. I believe we have a moment for a couple of friends from Nikkei Senior Gardens to be sharing some words of remembrance. So uh, first we invite uh, Anne Marie for a spot. Oh, right here. care director at NK and one of the nurses. Um, uh, thank you so much for letting me come today to talk about this amazing man. Um, I remember first meeting Bill, um, Wendy, Russell, and um, Bill's enormous collection of Hawaiian shirts. Um, I'll talk about that more in a minute. Um, um, when he joined our memory care family last year, um, we all immediately fell in love with him. Uh, my staff embraced his loving nature, his quiet demeanor, and his sweet smile. Um, throughout his journey in memory care, he developed a special, unique connection with two other residents, Lily and Shig. The three of them sat together daily for every meal. Now the three of them all had their own unique way of communicating. Lily would talk and ask questions. She only spoke Japanese. Shig would usually be contributing to the conversation by discussing either Chicago or uh, basketball. Uh, Shig and Bill were roommates. Uh, and Bill would answer both of them with a simple yes or no response. As an outsider looking in, watching the exchange between the three of them was actually, uh, it was comical to watch. Um, most times they would end up just randomly laughing about something that one of them said. Um, most times I never knew what they were talking about, but to see the connection and engagement uh, they had with each other was priceless. And it's why I love doing what I do. Most of our memory care residents love music and singing. It's remarkable to see them remember all the words to the songs, even though they can't remember their loved ones' names. They especially enjoy watching musicals, Bill's favorites, by the way. So when Wendy was visiting her dad one day, the residents were watching Sound of Music and Wendy mentioned she had some DVDs she could bring in. So Wendy brings in the DVDs, and the one that quickly became a crowd favorite was Mamma Mia. They loved the upbeat music. My staff would sing along and dance with everybody. Um, Bill was the biggest fan of all. Now, he was usually very quiet, but as soon as Mamma Mia came on, you could hear him singing so loud in his off-key voice, and he knew all the words. Now, there came a point where Mamma Mia was the only music movie they wanted to watch over and over and over. Thank you, Wendy. <laughs> the lyrics, if you know the music, Mamma Mia, Here I Go Again, <laughs> uh, was stuck in all of our heads every day. <laughs> then one day, the DVD came up missing. Uh, nobody could locate it. I think it was accidentally misplaced, or maybe it was hidden. I don't know. <laughs> but that was okay. We needed some variety. So we tried Grease. Uh, chitty Chitty Bang Bang, but no, Bill did not like those movies. So on another visit to see her dad, Wendy brings in a new DVD. Oh great, Wendy, thank you so much. We put the movie in the DVD player, and yes, you guessed it, Mamma Mia 2. 
<laughs> Bill was so excited he was grinning ear to ear. So Bill was able to wear a different Hawaiian shirt and straw hat, for that matter, every day of the week. He had his favorite, of course. It had a pretty Hawaiian dancer on the front. Um, Wendy and was Russell were so gracious to donate his Hawaiian shirt collection to us at Nikkei. One of my staff, Julia, distributed those beautiful shirts to our memory care residents. And so every day we're able, sorry, <laughs> every day we're able to remember Bill because they, at least somebody has one of those shirts on every day now. Bill is truly missed by all of us at Nikkei. Our residents become part of our family, as you can imagine. So to Wendy and Russell, thank you for giving your dad the quality of life that he deserved. Your dedication and love for him was so selfless. Thank you, everyone. Now we invite uh, Samantha or or do My name's Samantha. I'm actually the resident service director in the AL side of the Nikkei community where Mr. Bill lived. Um, I actually, oh sorry, <laughs> sorry, driving over here. I had a lot of stories and, and memories of Bill. <laughs> um, one thing for sure, I'm really happy and lucky to be part of this and I'm really happy that you allowed us to take care of it. Um, at NK, being one of the nurses, and Mary and I take really pride in our residents, and our, we treat them as family. So for you guys to allow us to be part of this is really special. Um, I'm sorry I'm crying, because I'm actually just really excited and happy. Every time I think of Bill, he's one of the residents, one of the ones that would always be happy. You know, you see them. <laughs> sorry, I'm actually not a crier. <laughs> oh man. Oh my God, Bill. <laughs> um, Bill was one of the residents that anytime you went to talk to him, he would make you laugh. He would always be smiling and happy. And I have so many memories, which Anne-Marie shared a lot of them, but one of the memories that I will never forget, and actually one of the interactions I've had when I actually started working at Nikkei was, he would hang out at the lobby. He would just hang out, read the newspaper. Sometimes we, we go and talk to him. Hey, Bill, what's going on? There's an activity. Let's go. No, no. He'd just read his newspaper or just sit there with his arms crossed, just looking. Oh, you know, our staff's thinking, what's going on, Bill? You know, you need to join more activities. So one day, you know, I decided to sit next to him, and I just sit there. He's in the lobby. He's just looking. He's just kind of serious, but he always oh, smiles. So I'm thinking, what's going on? What's wrong, Bill? And then he starts talking to me and says, <laughs> he says, oh, I don't want to go to these activities. I'm like, what happened? Why? You know, let's, let's, figure, it, let's figure out what else we can do. He's like, no, no. I'm just too young and they're just too old. And I just, <laughs> <laughs> you know, they're, just they're not listening to me. You know, they're, 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 no, they're, they're not, they're not, not fun. So I start laughing and I tell my staff about it. So from there, we actually invited him to hang out with us at the med station. So if you want to hang out there and talk to us, he'll just come and sit there and just chat it up with the, with the med, with the med techs and the caregivers there. And it was just funny because since that day, we would always be like, yeah, just don't sit over there. Come and hang out with us. <laughs> and he would love that. He'd love hanging out with us. He'd love just talking about anything and random things, talk about Hawaiian shirts, talk about movies, talk about food, and we just had a blast. Yeah, sometimes we'd be like, I'm sorry, Bill, we have to go, so if he would understand, he would walk back to his room, and, you know, but I, that's the one memory I'll never forget, just the way he said it, and he was so serious about it, but didn't want to offend anyone, so he didn't tell them anything, he didn't tell anyone anything, <laughs> but he was able to open up to me and tell me why he wasn't as, you know, committed to these activities, and we're like, oh, that makes sense, that makes sense, Bill. <laughs> Um, another thing that I remember about him that I really, really, I'll never forget, I mean, a lot of our residents are very appreciative with him. Anytime you helped him with anything, if it was small or big, 
he would be super thankful. He'll just thank you, thank you. He just wouldn't, wouldn't stop thanking you until you for sure were like, no, Bill, that's my job. Don't worry about it. No, thank you, thank you. And to me, you know, it's, you know, one thing is enough, but he was like, I want you to know how grateful I was for your help. <laughs> Sorry. Um, and just kind of talking with what Avery was saying about the hat, one thing we all know him for is the Hawaii shirts and the little fedora hat. He, he couldn't leave. We would dress him up. One time, actually, I was, as a, I was working as a caregiver, you know, I was trying to get my residents up, and I was helping in memory care. And I'm like, okay, Bill, you're all set. You know, I cleaned the brush's hair, everything. We're walking out of this room. He's like, no, wait. I'm like, what happened? You have your glasses, hearing aids, everything. You look good. No. And I'm like, what? What is it? And then he was like, oh, your hat. So I bring his hat, and he's like, thank you, thank you. And then we're just walking out the room. And I'm like, sorry, Bill, my, my apologies. <laughs> and he's just like, thank you, thank you. But he always had to have Hawaii shirt, the hat. Super sharp, always clean. Very, 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 very good. Um, I can stay here talking for, for a while, so I'm gonna stop myself there. <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, it was a pleasure being part of Bill's life. Um, really lucky, and every time, every time I think about your dad, it makes me smile. I'm crying, but I'm smiling. <laughs> so thank you. <laughs> You know, I, I just want to mention, you know, the things that I try and encourage in a lot, my congregation and my church members, if they can develop a sense of humility as well as gratitude. So thank you so much, Samantha, for sharing that. That coming, this culminating, overwhelming sense of gratitude, that uh, it's something I really want to encourage in everyone. If you can just have that sense of being thankful for everyone and everything, that's, that's a wonderful thing to have. So at this time, uh, we, at the climax of our service here, we have some words of appreciation from uh, Simon Paul Russell. Hi there. So I'm Bill's favorite son-in-law. <laughs> I'm his only son-in-law. <laughs> On behalf of Wendy, Courtney, Galen, Paxton, and myself. I want to thank you for coming today. I also thank, also like to thank, express our appreciation for the sympathy cards, phone calls, text messages, emails, prayers, flower arrangements, meals, and monetary gifts. Each of these has meant a lot to Wendy and me, and it helped us through this hard time a tad bit easier. Thank you, Reverend Mitchell Young, for opening up your church to have Bill service here today. Thank you for sharing your meaningful words of scriptures and prayers. It was also comforting to know that you were born and raised in Hawaii like Bill and I are. Your Ohana love and pigeon dialect were shared where we met. Thank you for Herman and Glenwood Fukui Mortuary. We appreciate your time to help plan the funeral and all the logistics that are needed from lunch options to the U.S. flag ceremony. It took a significant burden off of our shoulders. Finally, thank you to Nikkei Senior Gardens, which was Bill's home for the last two and a half years. The individual attention, care, and love they provided Bill was wonderful. Under the direction of Anne-Marie and Slam, every caregiver treated Bill as family and not a client. Again, so please join us for lunch in the hall after the service. Again, thank you for coming and showing your support during our time of despair. Seeing you here today made it a lot easier. Bill, enjoy the aloha in heaven with Doris, Lance, your dad, your mom, Uncle Sachi, Auntie Alice, Doug, and Uncle Norman, and my mom and dad. Meike aloha pumihana. share a benediction, uh, but, uh, which is the conclusion of the service. But uh, after the benediction, there will be a video tribute, I understand? Right after. Oh, OK. 
be during the video tribute will be happening uh, during uh, the final tribute. So uh, our our friends at Fukui will help us to do, to uh, facilitate the final tribute, uh, inviting people, I guess starting from the back, and they'll be helping uh, them come forward to both pay final respects as well as to greet the family during the final tribute. So receive now this benediction. Imawaku kalukamai kai o kahaku o Iesu Christo, meke aloha o kiaku, a me kalauna puana o kauhani hemo levi, me kako apau. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with us all. Amen.
trouble melts like a lemon drops high above the chimney top that's where you find me oh somewhere over the rainbow way up high and the dream that you did to Thank you. 